Hello, welcome to Classic Fashion Design Academy YouTube channel. My name is Kendo Yuwabukola Ogundari. This is our beginner series. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to essential parts of the sewing machine, how to thread your machine and run your stitches. Now let's look at some of the parts. Spoon pin, balance wheel, bobbin, bobbin case, bobbin window, throat plate, tension disc and spring, thread guide, thread regulator, stitch regulator, presser foot, presser bar lifter, needle, needle clamp, needle bar, feed dog. Now let's get to the machine and have a practical view of this part. Thank you. Also, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you are new to this channel. And also hit the notification bell so that each time I drop video, you can get notified. Now this is a simple, I mean a basic sewing machine that is ideal for beginners. It's also a universal machine. All the component parts that we have talked about earlier as I mentioned, I will show you one after the other. It's also similar to industrial machine. And the part of this machine is easily accessible in the market. And there are different brands. There is Butterfly, there is Brother, there is Ambro, there is Two Lion, there is Singer. They, they, they almost have similar um, parts. The, you know, the part is just the same. You, you can use, if you can use this, you can use the other, the other brand as well. So, you know, there's a whole lot of I mean, similarity among all the brands. So if you can use one, you can use the other. So the first thing that we are going to talk about is the spool pin. This spool pin is there to help you hold your thread. That is where you put the thread. If you want to sew, there are likely two different types of thread. You have the cone thread, you have the smaller thread. If you are using this cone thread, you have to put it on the floor right in the middle of the machine at the center. Just drop it in the front at the very center there you pull your thread over. For the smaller thread, just put it on your spool pin. It helps to hold your thread. Then from there, you pass your thread down to the other part. It can be here. It can also be here. So this especially is removable. You can use it to fill your bobbin. So that is the function of the spool pin. It, it, what it does majorly is to hold the thread in place. So if you see this rod on the machine, it's called the spool pin. What it does is to hold the thread in place. And it's specifically made for smaller thread. If you are using a bigger thread, you have to drop it on the floor. Then the second one is the balance wheel. This balance wheel is always at the right hand, at the right side corner of the machine. This is, this is it. This is the key part of the machine that helps you to set the machine in motion. This is what helps the movement of the machine. So if you want to operate the machine manually, what you do is just to use your hand to turn around this, the, the balance wheel. And it has to go clockwise. It has to be towards you. You don't you don't move it backward. You move you move it forward. And as you see that each time you move the balance wheel, several other parts of the machine also move because that is what coordinates the movement of the machine. You can see the, this is the thread a thread regulator. It moves. This is also the needle bar. It moves. You know. You can see the wheel, the, the, the wheel of the machine too, the leg of the machine, it moves. And you can see the pedal too, it moves. So once you move this, your balance wheel, several other parts of the machine too moves. It helps to regulate the movement you know, of the machine. So once you move this, it, so it gives you the direction of how to place your feet on the pedal. It helps you to place your feet on the pedal and you go in accordance to the reading it gives you. Once you move it, just wash the pedal at the leg of the machine. Just wash it. Then you just quickly use your leg to receive it 
I'm going the direction it gives you. So that is the balance wave. Then the next thing we are going to talk about is the bobbin and the bobbin case. This, this, these are called bobbins. This is bobbin. This is bobbin case. We, we are used to calling, we are used to call this ruler and this shuttle. But this is, it is, it is better known as bobbin and the bobbin case. This bobbin, you know, you have to fill it with thread. The thread on the full spin, so on the upper part. Then the one on the bobbin, so underneath. So you, you always see the thread on the machine, but the one in, on the, in the bobbin, it has to be inside the bobbin disc, the, the shuttle, the, the bobbin case disc underneath the machine. See your bobbin. There are different holes, perforated holes, around the bobbin. Just insert your thread into any of it. Insert your thread into any of it and use your thumb to hold it in place. Now wrap the thread around. When you wrap it around, you will now insert it inside the bobbin window. This is the bobbin window. That's another part of the machine. This is the bobbin window. You insert it inside the bobbin window and you use the bobbin guide to, to, to hold it in place. While your main thread is still on the spool pin, then you move your balance wheel and start running the machine. You can see that the thread is getting through. You can see that. That is how to fill in your body. It's automatically the tack itself when the when the thread has when the thread is filled up. So when you are done that, you release it and bring it out from the bobbin window. Then use your scissors to cut it. So when you are done with that, you can now put the bobbin inside the bobbin carrier. Now, like I said, there's a perforated part where you will bring out the thread and place it and bring it out of this hole. So you are, you are, you are good to go. You can sew with this now. Yeah, I will show you how to put it on that. Before I do that, let me just quickly talk about the, the, the stitch regulator. This is your stitch regulator. This is the stitch regulator. This helps you to regulate your, your stitches. You know, it has um, different levels. You have 30, 15, 10, um, 30, 15, 10, and 7. The, if you if you take it off completely, mm, your stitch will be so tiny. If you bring it down completely, you are going to have a loose stitch. So it helps to regulate your stitch. If you need a temporary stitch, maybe to just hold two pieces of fabric together, just put it down completely. If you take it off completely, you know the higher you go, the tinier your stitches will be. But if you if you take it up to the upper to the uppermost um, place, what it does is that it helps you to lock your stitches up. Taking it up and down, up and down, up and down helps you to lock up your stitches. So I will show you how that works by the time we start um, running our stitches. So that is what your stitch regulator does. It helps to regulate your stitches. You can have. You can space your stitches. It can be tiny bit, it can be wide, it can be wider, it can be spaced out so that you can have a loose stitch in case you want to have a temporary stitch that you can detach your fabric and your piece in, 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 uh, on the long run. So this helps to regulate your stitch. It also helps to tighten it by taking it up and down, up and down. I will show you how that goes by the time we start running the stitches. So like I said, I'm going to show you where to insert your bobbin case. Now the, the bobbin and the, 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 the thread, the bobbin is inside the case already. This is the machine plate. Just move it backward for you to be able to access the disc that will hold the bobbin carrier. So when this is your, you, you, you move, you, you, you move, uh, backward your machine plate just to allow you to access the disc. Then from underneath, 
from under me, there is a knock. There is a knock that must enter into this hole to keep the bobbin carrier in place. Then when you insert it, you, you, you see the knob directly underneath. Then you insert it, you, you put your, your bobbin carrier into the knob. As you have put, put, put it inside, there is also a perforated part. We are the edge. We are this long edge of this bobbin carrier must slip into. And when you insert it, you must hear the key in sound. Watch out for the key in sound. Key in sound. I think you can hear that. The key in sound. I hope you, you are listening to the key in sound. So when you insert your bobbin carrier, make sure that you hear that sound. It shows you that it is well secured. If you cannot hear that sound, it means that if you are running it, the bobbin carrier and the bobbin can get loosened and drop on the floor as you are sewing. So in order for you to, to avoid that, Make sure that it keys in very well. So we have done that. So the next thing we want to look at, this is a, this is a thread regulator. You can see it's moving, you know, each time we, we move the balance wheel, it moves. That is a, a thread regulator. So you take the thread around the machine. This is a thread carrier. There is a, you know, there is a perforated piece at the back, so uh, around the machine face piece. Face plate. You just put hand the thread there. Then you are, you now have the, the tension disc. This is the, the tension disc. You you are putting your thread in around the tension disc because it helps you to also regulate the thread. It 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 guides the movement of the thread. You know, it's just it's a circle. It's just like a round circle, like a round plate. The two facing opposite each other. So you make sure that you, you key in your thread inside it tightly. So when you have done that, when you have done that, you now put it inside this other knob that also regulates the stitch. When you have done that, you bring out the thread. There's a thread guide around the machine face plate. This is a machine face plate. So you put the thread again inside the thread guide. When you have done that, you use your hand to raise the, the needle bar. This is the needle bar. You can see the needle bar going up and down. The needle bar going up, up and down. There is also this needle clamp. This is called the needle clamp. That is what holds the needle in place. There are different types of needle, uh, depending on whatever texture of what you want to sew. The harder, wider hard material, soft material, there are different sizes of machine needle. So there is size 16, size 18 of the machine needle. So if, when, if you look at your needle, there is a hole at the tip, very tip of it. You, you, that is where you pass your thread through. That is, you pass your thread through the hole. So you pass your thread through the hole. So you can see the thread that enter, you are bring that this way, you bring it out on the other side, this way. So when you have done that, you know, right behind you, there is a, there is a presser bar lifter. This is the presser bar lifter that helps you to, to lift your machine foot. This is the machine foot. This is your machine foot. Since you have inserted your, the bobbin carrier, let's close this back. So now this is the machine foot. The machine foot has the carrier that helps you to lift it up and down. This machine foot helps to hold your fabric in place. When you are sewing, the machine foot helps to hold your fabric in place. This is the presser bar lifter. This is the presser bar lifter. And this is the foot. That, but if you drop it, that is what key in your fabric. It, holds, it helps to hold the fabric in place. It helps to hold your fabric in place. Now, the other, the last thing that we want to look at now is the feed dog. Look at, as the machine is moving, let me show you the feed dog. I have to detach my thread so that you can see the feed dog. As the machine is moving underneath, 
you know, there's like a, a teeth like, a tooth like, uh, a tooth like metal that is moving underneath. It's called the feed door. It helps to place your fabric in order. You know, as whether you are, you are so, the, the fabric is moving forward or backward, that is what helps to regulate the movement of the fabric on the machine. It's a very essential part of the machine too. Though it's a bit different, but when you look closely, you can view it. It's very essential. So those are the key parts of the sewing machine. I want to go over it again to show you how to fix your thread before we now run our stitches. Let me remove the thread completely and go over it to show you how to, to pass the thread again. Now, like I said, the spoon pin, that is what holds your thread in place. You can just wrap it, you can just pass the thread underneath. There is a there is a thread carrier at the back around the face plate of the machine. Drop it there. Then take it through the tension. This is the tension disc. The tension disc. You take it, make sure that you key in your thread tightly into that tension disc this way. Then you now put it into this thread regulator. When you have done that, there is a thread guide here. Then you put it inside this thread guide. Then from the outward part, insert your thread into the needle. For you to be able to insert the thread conveniently, always have your scissors with you and you trim it. Slant it, slant your hands, slant it and don't cut straight. Just slant it a bit so that the thread can have a sharp edge to easily assess the hole of the needle. So you slant and trim it. Then, if, if you want to put in your thread, always drop this back. The foot, the, the foot, the foot, always drop it so that you can, you can easily, you can easily assess the needle hole. So you can see that it will enter with ease. You know, when you have done that, you know, initially, I said that the thread that is on top of the machine is the one that will sew the fabric at the upper part. Then the one that is inside the bobbin is the one that will sew the, the fabric underneath. It takes two of the thread to tangle, I mean to work hand in hand, to work together. The two have to be together before you can sew. So what this, with the needle, with, with your needle, just move your balance wheel and it will get into it under to bring out the thread that is in the body. That is it. You can see that it has brought it up. So these are the two threads that must work together, that must be to, that must tangle together before you can sew. So when you have brought that out, you can now start to try and run your stitch. On this piece of fabric, I have this um, vertical line as a guide. So you know, what you will do, just drop the machine foot with the lever. Then you start running. Make sure that you are running it towards you, clockwise. Just use your hand to set the balance wheel in motion. And as you move it, just put, place your leg on the pedal and you watch the other wheel on the leg of the machine to move it. Then the pedal, just place your foot on it and go in direction at which the balance wheel is taking you. You start running the machine. You can use your two hands to guide it. When you are done, bring out the fabric and you pull the thread out a bit, give it a little bit distance, then you cut off, put it back, drop the machine foot and start it all over again. Now you can see that we have run like two lines now. Look at our stitches. 
you can see that it's neat, it's neat, and the front and the back. The thread here on the spool pin is sewing it up. The other one on the bobbin is sewing it underneath. So that is how it goes. Now let me show you how to use the stitch regulator now to mark off the beginning of your stitch. When we started the other two lines, we did not lock it up. You can see it can easily lose also at the end. So by the time you want to lock it up, just drop the machine foot, then you start to put, you can see the stitch regulator. As I put it up, the fabric is trying to come out, then I put it down again, look at it. So the beginning has been double stitched. You can see that it's thicker here, so it cannot lose. Then you keep sewing. When you are almost about to get to the end again, you put up your stitch regulator, you drop it down, you put it up, you drop it down. That helps to tighten your stitch from the beginning to the end. Now, let me also quickly explain this. Always have a long rope before you start again so that it will not disconnect from the needle. So if you want to, I want, I need you to watch this closely. By the time you start sewing again, you discover that the fabric is moving forward and the stitches is, is, is intact. The stitches, you can see the, 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 the stitches we are running is intact. But if, and if by any means you discover that the fabric is coming out, you can see, instead of moving forward, it's coming out. The thread will detach. The, starch will, the, the, the stitches will no more be in place. It means you are running the machine anti-clockwise. So that will help you to know that you are not on the right track. Or the material you are sewing is... is, is um, or, or the material, if you... The material you are sewing is 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 um, moving away from the machine as you're going out this way. It's going out this way. It means you are not sewing. It means you are pedaling the machine anti-clockwise. The thread will detach, and the fabric will be going out of the machine. You know, it has to be moving forward when you are sewing. If you are, if you are on the right track. It has to be moving forward the way it's going. But like I said, if by any means it's going out, it means you are not sewing. It means you are pedaling anti-clockwise. So it has to be forward. It has to be forward. It's when it's forward this way, that is when your thread can be in place. Your, your stitches can be intact. If not, the thread will disconnect and the fabric you are sewing will be moving out instead of so, I mean, moving towards you. So, you should watch out for that. So, with that little explanation, I think you can try and run the machine on your own now. So, I advise you to disconnect the fabric, disconnect your thread, and just keep running it. Disconnect your thread. Just pull the fabric and hold it in place, just as a guide, and keep running the machine. Just keep running it slow and steadily. Don't mind that there is no thread. Don't mind that you are not. You cannot view any stitch. Just keep running it emptily like that and keep repeating the process. Go slow and steady. Go slow and steady. Be repeating the process. Repeat the process continuously until your, your leg is a little bit regulated on the machine and the fabric is not moving out, it, it means that it is not skipping. Your pedal is not, I mean, your, your, your speed is not skipping backwards. They just keep on doing that. Keep on doing it. Just run it emptily like that for a period of time. Just keep sewing it. Don't mind that there's no any speed. Just keep doing that until you are used to it. Just keep on doing that until you are used to it. Then after a while, you can now pass the thread again and continue to run the stitch. Thank you. In this tutorial, we have learned the various parts of a sewing machine and how it functions. 
Thank you so much for watching. Please love, share, and subscribe. I also look forward to your questions and opinions in the comment section. Thank you and watch out for the next video. God bless.